<laughs> you know what the problem is? What? You got it set to M for mini, when it should be set to W for Wumbo. Patrick, I don't think Wumbo is a real word. Come on, you know. I Wumbo, you Wumbo, he, she, me, Wumbo. Wumbo, Wumboing. I wonder we'll if a fall from this height would be enough Wumbo, to kill me. Wumbology? The study of Wumbo? It's first grade, SpongeBob. Patrick, I'm sorry I doubted you. Hold on, let me. I'm just, I just want to listen. I, to I hope you can enjoy. We're not doing these anything. words just from our stop. sponsor. We're, I'm, we're not keeping this. I'm Aww. now I am because it's funny that I interrupted you. <laughs> but <laughs> tell it. I'm sure that sounded great and not weird at all. Hey See, everyone! Yeah, now, now you, you, now you, you gotta cut it. Hey, now everyone! You, now you gotta cut it. Let's let's all kiss. I need to get. Mm. Mm. Bro, your tongue's way too oh. thick. <laughs> no, my my tongue's wumbo, man. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> wumbo side. Oh, of you should. Not, I I'm upset you made that sound. <laughs> do it. No, no, I will cut the recording. <laughs> I won't do it. I don't even want to know that you have that. Like, too late. <laughs> I don't really want to know that the internet knows I have that. Do you want me to cut that then? Probably. Just the, when I said that. So, like, right now, they don't <laughs> know what I'm out. saying. I'll just bleep it out. <laughs> so now, not so like, this conversation yeah, doesn't this have is, to make a lot of sense. This is in, yeah. Yes. I'll just bleep it. Bleep that thing I said. Yes. That I said. Yeah. I didn't but even, not I didn't us talking about the thing you said. No, yeah, this is it. I'll just bleep the thing. The thing. Yeah. Yes. See? Thrilling content. <laughs> oh, Bryce, okay. it tastes so good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, your whiskers. <laughs> I, you. I, I you. might cut that. <laughs> You're talking about, you might know, these are... I said whiskers. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, like... Star got, Wars is a family-friendly movie series <laughs> franchise brand. But we are not. I'm only friendly to my family. And, and your guys. I'm, okay. friendly, I'm, I'm friendly to most people. But it's not about me. Except your enemies? It's about Star Wars Episode Nine. The fries The, fries, of the leaks, Skywalker. the teasers, the, the shenaniganery fall coming up to this boy these trailers really tease me oh man okay I'm i was trying to get away from this <laughs> uh, seg segue trying to steve jobs this real nicely but uh <laughs> well you blew it that kind of died now you with die. steve. <laughs> so uh here we are i'm really interested to see what's so important about skywalker's fries Fry? You keep, fries you keep of, making the joke that it's fries of Skywalker. Fries and of I don't Skywalker. Get it. I don't know why. <laughs> because I love French fries. Bro, that's so the, I just keep making that association. That's the parody one, though. Mm -hmm. The fries of Skywalker. Mm. It'll all be like taking place in like a Burger King. That's when we like get a bad sponsored. fast food restaurant. That's when we get our first sponsor from a from a burger company. We'll make the fries of Skywalker. Yeah. Fries of Skywalker. So all burger companies, you can buy us for really cheap. Yeah, we'll take like five bucks. A piece. We'll split it. We'll split the five three ways. Yeah, we'll split the fifteen three ways. <laughs> <laughs> or do, no, I have a. Well, do, you'll just like provide like catering to all of our sessions. All of them. I mean, the that's one, more the, than fifteen the one you, bucks. The one you sponsor, <laughs> at least. Yeah, buy buy us <laughs> buy us a burger. I'll take a salad. Okay. Personally. Well. Wait, wait, to, wait, wait, wait to make it sound like you're a thin person. No, I'm. I'm I thought you were here to represent the Wumbos of the world with me. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. He is a thin person. Like 
I he's, will, is, is his shorts are set to mini? He's really, he's really thin. Yeah. It's <laughs> set to <laughs> mini. His shorts are set to mini. Not you got it upside down. No, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a wombo, and I want to represent like the middle ground. I wonder if this fall is long enough to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Bryce is the skinniest, and then we're like the same, and I want to represent the middle ground. Okay, but you just said we're the same, so... I want to... How can you be the middle ground? Yeah, how can you be the middle? I'm a wombo, and then I'm going to, like, mini go, and go the middle. I'm gonna There's no middle mini. ground. You're either a mini or you're a wombo. There's two types of people I'm, in I, the you world. You know what? I'm going to revolutionize the categorization You can't be humanity. progressive here. Okay. No, there's no, two this options. This is not a progressive podcast. All right, dude. <laughs> there's the... definitely no one here that leans left. Yeah, no, I... Definitely not. I'm not no. allowed to do and NASCAR. No NASCAR for me. <laughs> it's two left. Too when, I pray, when I play in... Rainbow Six Siege, I only fight from the left side of the corridor because I only use the key E. I never use Q. Yep. I just Q don't, is I unbound just don't for you. don't lean left. No. Wow. What a strong uh, driving with him, drive, man. Driving with him <laughs> is, uh, is tough. Because you got to go around your... The place you're going, and, and then go right, right, right. Three right. rights make a left. Pretty sure that's a Reliant K album, <laughs> I think. Actually, yeah. Or is it three lefts make a right? I think it's three rights make a left. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that how that makes works? sense. Reliant K, yeah. So. Right, right, right. Right, 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 right. So you're right, you're right, I'm right. <laughs> so then. Our, our oh, left? so we are <laughs> left leaning oh, back. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan K said it first. <laughs> You're calling call call us mode. out. <laughs> A band that hasn't been together in who knows how long. I are they really are they really broken up? I, I wouldn't I, be surprised. I made but. that statement with no prior knowledge. <laughs> I'm hoping See, I'm right. At the moment, I'm forgetting even what their songs are. <sighs> Nothing. So hey, consequences. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. Of them. Yep. has no idea. Be my skin. I do. I've heard that. Um, oh. Well, you doubt me. No, Ian. copyright. We can't. Such a no, no, no. Mode. I'm looking up songs for... Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, I... Oh! Da, 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 da. Dude, I love their 12 Days of Christmas cover. Oh, yeah. The it's 12 Days of my Christmas one is really Christmas good. Of all time. Let's see. What was the last... They're, yeah. You know, oh. I really wanted to... I, I haven't decided if this channel is ever going to get political. But apparently we just did. <laughs> well, we, I mean, we I thought kinda, we segued out of it pretty well, but you brought us right back in. I sure did. See, we thanks. were dipping our toes, the water was kind of cold, and then Lucas, like, shoved us now. And, like, kind of in the... Yeah, my head's in the water, kind yeah. of gurgling. I'll get you some gurgling sounds for the Foley No, department. please. <laughs> Foley designed by Ian. Foley designed Foley by, by Ian. Ian. Or should I say Tin Foley? No, nope, that not that was keep that cut one to that. Your, keep that keep that one to yourself. Okay, gotcha. I'm all right, Ian. <laughs> You're that kind of guy. Well, we'll see if we're going to the leaks now. Any of that makes it in. Oy vey. And also, I want to make it clear that if I keep that in, the what we said does not necessarily represent our political leanings, and it shouldn't matter either way. That, shut up. I don't. <laughs> you stupid, uh. Stupid guy. Weed damn. party guy. Stupid wumbo. Say your belt back to mini. I, I kid you not. <laughs> uh, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. I had a. It was a Friday. I, yes, that, that. Worthless information. No, but, it's very important. What are you talking okay. about? It was no. Friday, December. Uh, no, 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 they don't. They don't need to know that. <laughs> they don't need to know that one. No, nope, that, that's well, too much that's information. Too I step myself. Bryce, they might find out where we live. If you tell them what day <gasps> we live. Oh there. shoot! Can you delete that, Lucas? We cut that out. Cut that right now. Dude, I want you to cut that, that right cut now. That. <laughs> I want to. I want right to speak now. to a manager. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so okay. Karen, Watch. Bro. I. We're, yeah. Delete. Oh, it's done. I did it. You did it. Yep. Okay, good. I feel much safer. Okay. I feel safer. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, it was December uh, uh, 6th. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right back to My social security number is... Uh, <laughs> 696969. 420. XXX Tentacion. That's my social security number. <laughs> so I was, I was driving my sister up to get her car from my uncle, who's mechanic shop, like... 45 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. And 
got there, and of course, being an uncle, he had to rope us into a conversation for like 20 minutes. Classic. And <laughs> in that conversation, because he's, uh, everyone in my family is like a raging Republican, just like <laughs> really, really hard right. Like hick level Republican? Um, yeah. With their assault rifles and their yeah. camo jackets. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he unironically said, the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. He said that to Whoa. me. He said it. <laughs> Just said it right Whoa. there. So I was like, okay, man. Oh, Gulp. my goodness. He was talking about how there's crime in the neighborhood he's in. As, and how there's as one, all neighborhoods yeah, pretty much And have. how there's this one guy who apparently, like, did 80, 80 robberies and then got put in jail and then let out. Okay. That's and impressive. Then robbed probably. again, then went back to jail. And then he's like, and well, uh, they're probably going to let him out again now because, uh, well, he's, uh, these, these darn Democrats, you just, oh, you can't have a black guy in jail, so uh, they're probably going to let him out again. <laughs> he's like, freaking Democrats. The only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. <laughs> I, it was so hard to keep myself from laughing. I want this to be not real. It was incredible. Oh boy. I can't, I don't know if I should laugh or cringe. I, I know. I think I'm doing do both I, internally. I, it and was hysterical. Yeah, no, this is like, so like, like, wow. Clenching that's, feeling in my chest is uncomfortable. my I, uncle. Yikes. Uncle Dave. Yeah, you're right. That's Uncle Dave. Classic. Yes. Actually, what's a more... For the record, Dave is not his name. No, We're just like, using what, it. What's a very, like, right hickman name? Tom. Tom? No, no, bro. My boy Tom Sawyer, he ain't that bad. Um, Let's say... Oh, oh, Jedediah. I was going to say Jeb. Jeb? Okay. Jeb Bush. Hey, he made um, Minecraft. <laughs> Jeb. I've met a night... I've met a, I've met a very feminine Jeb. It doesn't work. Okay. In my head. What about um, um, Ronald McDonald? What Ron about what about what about? You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Ronald McDonald, <laughs> raging Republican. <laughs> you can tell because he wears red. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, here's a McDonald's leak. They're changing yellow to black, and they're gonna be changing their M to something else. Uh, it hasn't been confirmed what the sign will be, but. Major changes coming to McDonald's uh, hierarchy structure. Um, they will no longer be certain. They're changing the and cut. The They're changing the M to a W. For Wumbo. <laughs> Wumbo. <laughs> they got it upside Wum down. Wumdonalds. <laughs> Bro, I did a Wumdonalds. Oh my gosh. Bro, politics. I'm so happy we hit. We do okay, we hit politics this episode. <laughs> Next episode, we have to talk about religion. Yeah. There we go. And what's the third one? I know there's like a third. Oh, is it uh, sex? sexuality? Probably. I yeah, that's a big sex. one. Okay. So, episode four, we'll talk about sex. Sexuality, gender. Yeah. Okay. Um, episode four? Yeah, because we had a, we just so, recorded episode one. This is episode two. This is probably still going to be. I mean, it depends on how I cut it up. Whoa. This could easily still be in one. It depends how long I make it. You know, if I were scrolling through like the tube and I saw like. Six hour long video. He just referred to it as you wouldn't two. watch it. Yeah, probably. I'd probably yeah. cut it up a little bit. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. So e, uh, Ian is. Uh, shoot, I just said my name. I've said your name multiple times. Mother Forker. Um, <laughs> this is it. This is where they catch you. Yeah. No. I. I you heard it here first, folks. This is episode two. Okay. Um. So if you, I'm sure if you clicked on the my the, friend the video, blank has blank. decided it's episode two. Okay. I'll use my name. Ian, my friend Ian. I've said his name multiple times already, my name is so good. I don't have to go through and correct it with BOT! J Josh Jameson Jesus Christ. This is my name. David. <laughs> Dave, Dave. Or no, Jerry. Henry. Oh, hi, I'm Jerry. I'm, a, I'm the editor for this episode. <laughs> Howdy, boys and girls. Get out of here, Jerry. Oh, sometimes they let me hate. out of that dark room in the corner. <laughs> They let me have gruel we, every we keep, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> we keep them in in like a in old photo like processing um, <laughs> with the red light. Yeah, and he's like, "Why do I have to be in here? It's digital." And we're like, "Shut up!" <laughs> I, I thought I, I thought old Lincoln freed the slave eaters ago. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> I'm white now. I've been in the dark so long. <laughs> All right. That's Are we going back to okay? Oh, yeah. All right. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. What? <laughs> After these short messages, we have big return. Oh, guys, I do have to explain the concept of. Uh, comedy? Oh, boy. Just, like, jokes. Sometimes Joking. we don't mean what we say. What? You can laugh at a thing and not approve of it, which is why Holocaust jokes exist and 9-11 jokes. Because occasionally, those are funny if done well. I love but waking we up at 9-11 in the morning. <laughs> It's my favorite time to wake up. It shouldn't be funny. <laughs> but <See>? it is. <laughs> like, you know what? You, a huge part of comedy is just surprise factor. And Holocaust and 9-11 are surprising topics that just randomly show up. So when someone comes out of the woodworks with a Holocaust joke, you're just like, okay! And you just start laughing. Just kind of Which does talk. not mean you approve of the Holocaust! <laughs> but I'm sure we're preaching to the choir in our audience. I think there's probably going to be about two people that watch this. <laughs> I, I I think we're going to get a uh, hundred thousand viewers. One I day. got people texting me right now. They're like, Bryce, are you recording the podcast? Yeah, like the long about a hundred thousand texts. Your phone is blowing the, the up long right away. now. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. I can confirm. Podcast. I am it's watching his phone, and it is literally blowing it's, up. It's, oh, it's gone. It's it's so oh, so um, to everyone who's fire. listening now, sorry, I never responded. Yeah, we need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are now accepting it, donations it to get him a new phone. Yeah, it's, I'm starting to go fund me. Yeah. <laughs> That seems like a very right thing to do. If you didn't hear the tactical nuke, uh, I feel like that was pretty left. <laughs> Spe- Says the man wearing red shorts. <laughs> uh, speaking of left, let's figure out what left we have to cover in this episode. Oh, oh, great idea! Segway. Oh, oh, like that? It's yeah. Segway Man. Call me I, Living Steve Jobs. You know, I think I know the, the <laughs> secret identity of Segway Man. I think his real name is Paul Blart. <laughs> you know, Ball, Ball Cop 1 and 2 Best before, movies of all time I just want to say on that note before we get started here I was watching Martin Scorsese's <laughs> So new, many uh, notes this is Martin Scorsese's new film Brilliant. The Irishman On my friend's oh, yeah. uh, Netflix And then I got kicked off because he was watching Paul Blart Ball Cop <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's hilarious I have everything you can get kicked off <laughs> All the things <laughs> And someone has to watch instead of The Irishman. <laughs> it's Paul Blart. Boy. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I can't Masterful believe, filmmaking. I can't believe he's watching it on Netflix. He's not a true Paul Blart fan if you're not watching it on VHS. <laughs> VHS! <laughs> you're not a true fan. Or cassette tape. Or ca- Be kind. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's I, a thing. Yeah. I didn't know, but now I do. It's like 10 years too late. <laughs> oh, wow. Alright, All right, wanna to open it. up Act 2 with a new planet? <laughs> oh, another one! Another okay. planet! I love how these are all planets we've seen before. Okay, they're new planets, but yet, it's another desert planet. <laughs> it's another, it's desert. another actually, ice planet. P- Pasana was a desert planet. I did know that. Yeah. It's another jungle planet. The it's another jungle ice planet. planet. Jungle. This, desert. the heroes of the Resistance make their way to <gasps> the snow-dusted planet of Kijimi. <laughs> Kajimi? Kajimi. Just go to Kashyyyk and, 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 and add a few letters, please. Isn't Kajimi the creator of Death Stranding? That's Kojima. I, I know. Oh, I know. Sorry. Obviously. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, they're going to go. Dude, they're going to Kojima's house. <laughs> going to Kojima. You had it here first, folks. I saw was episode <laughs> nine. He's, getting, he's going to cross over with Death Stranding and Kojima Projections. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to, to the, make the way story for is, in the future. This story is gonna we're gonna get a TV spot soon where we get a really awkward shot of a fetus. <laughs> in the day. Have, you, if, have you seen the Death Stranding trailers? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got it. It's a whack are game. Those, are those the ones you're talking about where it doesn't make any sense? Yeah. yeah. And there's like some shots of a fetus. It's like, okay, sure. Oh. That's a thing. I don't understand the story we see of this fetuses game. all the time. It's now. out now. You what? Yeah. We look uh, no, at no, fetus. No. Explain that sentence. <laughs> fetuses is I. Fetus I. Fetus I. I yeah. believe. Fetus I. <laughs> I believe it's correct. I think it's a fetus I. Yeah. 
No, one time at, at uh, the college that I go to at Show Me Main Unnamed, we did like a live like scan of him. A fetus eye? Fetus eye. <laughs> of a fetus eye. There oh, a... it's like, a, oh, a little feet eye. Yeah, he, he, oh, a little feet eye. Does he like give you a thumbs <laughs> he up? He has his belt set to mini. He does. He does. <laughs> Yeah, the feet out of gives, oh, He gives you a little thumbs up. Star Wars I episode nine, Wumbo the fetus. rise of Wumbo. <laughs> the oh, rise of Wumbo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The study of Wombology? <laughs> okay. All right. The snow-dusted planet of Kajimi to execute their plan to discover what secrets the dagger held. Ooh. Despite not being in possession of the dagger anymore... 3PO tells the crew that he has the message committed to memory. So all hope is not lost. Doesn't matter that Chewie had it. Hey. It's fine. He's, he took pictures of it with his with his protocol brain eyes. I mean, that like it is plausible as far as robots go. Sure, but, like, but come on. Yeah. Why did Chewie ever even have Why to have it? Why does it even matter? They should just be like, hey, 3PO, uh, picture, picture. Okay, don't need this anymore. Let's go. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, Why'd they do that in the first place? That's it, yeah. Or like this is just a lazy way of saying first order gets the dagger. Why didn't they give it to BB-8? They yeah. should like, open up one of your I many mean, compartments, slot I it mean, in. It depends on how big the dagger is. It's oh BB-8 it's can not do anything. That big and also BB-8, yeah, he's perfect. He can play whack a mole with, uh, <laughs> with a motherboard. Yeah, with a <laughs> with a X-wing motherboard. You know he gains speed every every movie too. In the trailers, <laughs> he does for this, seem this, to. He's ri- he's rolling along with these horse things yeah, on uh, they, Star Destroyer. Have you not seen the trailer? No, I've avoided. Well, every time I see a trailer, oh. I just kind of like look away. Oh, it's I avert my beautiful. eyes. Beautiful. There is a cavalry charge. <gasps> oh, I've seen something like that. Across the like... surface of a Star Destroyer. <laughs> During <laughs> a space battle. I what? It's probably an, a, a high atmosphere battle, but like. What is the point of that? I have no idea. We'll, I we'll just I, I'm just so excited to find out. I right know. <laughs> I'm excited to see. And BB-8's there, reason. and he's keeping up with the horses. <laughs> Wow, and he's not even like being dra- dragged along. Nope, he's like a rolling roll. along with them. Wow, he's they, leading the charge. Bro, bro, BB-8 got a V8 motor. This movie. <laughs> V8. <laughs> the V8. He's shiny and chrome. <laughs> Witness me. Witness. <laughs> Mediocre. Guys, we've seen that movie. If you heard. <laughs> we reference all. What are we referencing? All the good oh, references. Okay, right. so. That's his lazy writing, because we know Kylo's going to get the dagger now. Poe po tracks down an old contact of his, Zori Bliss, who brings them to a small creature <laughs> named Babu Frick. Oh, are you kidding me? Babu Frick! That was a mistake. <laughs> That's a massive mistake. <laughs> Why would you name a okay. character made by Disney called Frick? I especially... <laughs> you freaking fricks! What the frick? You frick? What have you learned? That's what you learned! That's what you learned! That's what you learned! That's what you learned! I think we just blew everyone's ears. Oh, yeah. Out. I can... I can Should we do mine are gone? Should we do an ear rape warning? <laughs> Before, like, every episode? <laughs> <laughs> warning for those with sensitive ears. <laughs> and hearts. Okay, I want... I, I do want to break this down, though. So... Mm. Poe is like, hey guys, I have a contact who can help us change 3PO's program. And they go to her, and she's like, I know a guy that can help us with this. So they go to him. Another contact. Babu Frick. The Frick. And Bab- he's the one that does it. Why? Why does she exist? Just have it be the guy. Is Zori yeah. Bliss going to she... The- or just bring it. Bring 3PO back to the jungle base and have R2 do it. Also, okay, so this He can do it! Yeah. Is it happened once or twice in just in this in the first act or like yeah, in the first act, where like the resistance was was a place and then the the first order comes and attacks that place. Twice. Twice Twice in the first act. And three contacts in the first act. And (laughs) two MacGuffins? The white wayfinder yeah, mm-hmm. and the dagger. And the dagger. Yeah, but uh, j- just like if you count the the necklace, yeah. that's three. Because yeah. I'm like, if the first order didn't attack that place, you just have that person be at the bar. 
Like, oh yeah, I'm Babu Frick. I'm Babu, Babu Frick. Babu Frick. I, I know how to... Hey mom, my favorite character in the <laughs> Disney Star Wars movie is Babu Frick. Oh. What did you say? <laughs> Why did you say that name? Why did you say that What's name? your goddamn language, Jimmy? Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Go with the Babu Frick yeah, Babu. to hack 3PO's programming to read the Sith language on the dagger. Frick tells everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Frick, name. Frick tells everyone that he can unlock the message to be read, but in doing so, C3PO's memory will be wiped. What? That's never happened. For before. some reason. Who knows why that works that way? That doesn't make any sense! You're the writer, you don't have to make I'm gonna it hack way. your programming so a certain firewall is no longer in place. You're gonna lose all your memory, though. Because, you know, security is directly... Actually, sometimes is directly associated with your memory. They're just fo forcing in these emotional fake-outs. I outs. know! Because they have nothing else to do at this point. Still reeling from the loss of Chewbacca, the heroes argue about finding another way to get the job done. But in an act of self-sacrifice, C-3PO voluntarily consents to the modifications, knowing that, for all intents and purposes, the droid we've all known for years will essentially die. According to my sources, this scene is reportedly one of the most emotional in the film. <laughs> Whoop-de-doo. R2 is not with them? R2's not even uh, here! Uh, Why isn't R2 here? I just wanted to take a last look. Where is he? Is he just at sitting? At my friends. At the jungle base? Yeah, just chilling with Leia. Sure like, Leia's with Leia's Carrie Leia's Fisher's Leia. reanimated corpse? Yikes. Yikes. Ooh. Thanks, Disney. Uh, no, they used uh, reused footage, right? Apparently. Yeah. Supposedly. So they say. I wouldn't put it past. I just don't good understand old Walt how they're going to do zoom bodies everything. and reanimate. Yeah, I know. It seems like a lot. Voodoo magic. Seems like you'd have to really structure the film around what your shots were from previous. Films. Yeah, so which is like probably why what she's been in the first scene. That's it. <laughs> That's true. Basically. Yeah. She's just chilling there. And she'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll be the also the she'll reason. She'll be in the metal handing out scene. Also, the reason Ray is wearing exactly what she wore in the first movie is because they had to use footage of uh, Daisy Ridley from the first movie when she was. The scenes that they're using from Leia, mm -hmm. Ray is in, and she's wearing her stuff from the first movie, so they had to have her in this movie go back to her original outfit again. Oh. So Ray's. You know how in the OT, they actually tell like a narrative story through Luke's outfit? Yeah. It's like, oh, he's wearing farm boy clothes in episode in, in, in New Hope. And then in the next one, it's 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 tan and he's, you know, he's he's growing up. It's he's getting a step closer. And in in, a, in Return of the Jedi, he's in black, black garb, orders. which at the very end gets unbuttoned and this little flap opens to reveal that it's a white suit underneath. It's like, oh, he's a pure, pure soul underneath. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's some nice little it's visual very, very storytelling. Nice. Yeah. And then in this movie, it's like desert tan robes. Which were fine. Island, white to me. island think, gray robes. Which were and nice. then desert tan robes again. And like white, a white robe. Okay, because sort so of white. With yeah, the yeah. arc, if, so if the arc was. Of Ray was for her to end up being in the dark, like do the the flip flop where Kylo's on the good side and Ray's on the bad side, which would have been cool. And if like from white to gray to black, that would have been, been interesting. Cool. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. But they're Ray not will, doing that. Ray will be back, perfect because she's back to where she started as a character. In the yeah, when, yeah. Okay, I get like oh logistics, like you, you needed to do that for your scenes. Or, or here's an idea. You could have, you could have let Carrie Fisher die when she died in Force Awakens. Oh, it's all just such a mess. You mean Last Jedi? Last that Jedi. one. They one of the bad Star Wars movies. Genuinely, I think you could watch the first half of Force Awakens and end it before Star Killer Base is mentioned, and then jump to this movie, and it'll make more sense. You could, actually, yeah. 
I like mm-hmm. the pl- the Luke plot will just be dropped randomly, but that's all you lose. Mm-hmm. Everything else just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Snoke will not really be mentioned, but that's about it. Yeah. I guess like and I'm like you can add Snoke to this film. Like I mean, he's a shoehorn. If he character came anyway. back, no one would bat an eyelash. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Phasma came back. I'd just be like, well, that's the second time. Sure. Sure. Oh mm. my gosh, Phasma. She she died. Died right. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, she fell into a pit. Right. No. Yeah. She, uh, waste. A pit on a waste ship or on something. a cool character. My my favorite trivia about her is that when Ryan Johnson was writing the Last Jedi script, he forgot Starkiller Base blew up at the end of Force Awakens. So he had this line. What an idiot! So he had this line where Finn is like, "Phasma, we threw you in the trash compactor. How would you survive?" And she was like. I was stuck in there for weeks. I had to survive eating trash. And then someone was like, Ryan, the base blew up right after that. And he's like, oh, so he cut that line. <laughs> I mean, if I was trying- Which kind of explains the opening of the title of the, of the crawl where it says the First Order reigns because he forgot their base blew up. How'd they ever get someone so incompetent? I know! It's incredible! I mean, if it was literally anyone else on the planet, I'd say, bro, I get, like, yeah, oh yeah, writing scripts are really, like, exhausting and tired, and you've been through a lot, you're living off of coffee and cocaine, but, <laughs> like, bro, you can't mess up that much with coffee and cocaine. Like, Those are both very strong drugs. Like, <laughs> imagine if Lawrence Kasdan, when he, when he was brought on to work on, epi- on episode five, was like, Oh, the Death Star blew up <laughs> in New Hope? Oh, I oh, forgot. I thought Vader George Lucas be- would have fired him on the spot. No. I wanted Tar... Like, you can't forget that. No. I wanted heckin' what's-his-face? Tarkin. I wanted Colonel Tarkin. Oh, yeah, he br- he brings Tarkin in. It's like, and Dorcas is like, uh, you can't... He, uh, he, he died. Uh, he, uh, was on the Death Star. Sammy? He, he, he's dead. Yeah, he was on the Death Star for weeks. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, he <laughs> <laughs> and he, he made friends with the trash compactor monster. I just want a dumb line to even include in the first place. To have someone forced, like, really forced ask, How did you survive? Well, I ate the trash. <laughs> I know. Like, <laughs> you want to tell him that? The, the line itself is bad. <laughs> yeah, like, why did you even include it? You just get it. I, could, I survived in the trash for weeks. He, Ryan has a weird obsession with really, really mundane stuff. Yeah. Like, do you guys know what originally was supposed to happen when Rose and Finn got on the on Snoke's big... Big ship. They lived together for years and years. <laughs> Made a small family. <laughs> Just living in the maintenance docks <laughs> together. <laughs> no, uh, until they were spotted by. They and then they became known as the the ro- the, 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 the roses and the ducks. The roses and the ducks. The roses <laughs> and the film. The roses, the infamous film, roses and ducks. <laughs> Mm. They were they were supposed to get on the ship and then stumble into the freaking laundromat on the supremacy. They were supposed to be. Is that it. why there's that shot with like the iron irons and the? Clothes? That could be part of it. He was supposed. To, they were supposed to stumble into this giant room that starts spinning and tumbling. And are then you kidding me? Apparently a yeah. Oh. And then apparently a wave of. Uh, what they Tide think pods. is like a dark cloud of poison was supposed to come out, but it turns out it was lint, and they were going to be suffocating in a sea of lint, and then they climb out, and a bunch of stormtrooper uniforms are dumped on them, and then they climb out of that, and then they get into a room where there's a bunch of stormtrooper uniforms being pressed and cleaned by machinery. That's He wrote that. He intended that to be in the movie. That's kind of funny, but not for this. Not for the eighth film. Hey, it's your eighth installment in the saga. Let's have our characters stumble through a laundromat. You know, the infamous boss, the Dust Bunny. The Dust Bunny! The Dust Bunny! (laughs) Darth Dust Bunny! Dude, that's something you put in a Lego game. Yeah, that would be be so funny. A boss battle. Not even joking, a lot of things in in Last Jedi 
would be hysterical in a Lego game. Yeah. yeah. Like Chewie yeah. with the Porgs. That's that would be that, great in a Lego so, game. That's yeah. In the movie, I was like, that's not funny. No. But with, with Legos, in a Lego game, yeah. that'd be so funny. That's true. The characters stumbling into the laundry room, that'd be so funny in a Lego game. Yeah, because and it's a it parody. Works because it's a parody. Making fun of a comedy. Not yeah. supposed to be taken seriously. Ooh. If you put that in your movie. It, and obviously, like, you can make the argument, well, he took it out. So obviously he knew it wouldn't be good. Uh, I mean, but not necessarily. He him. wrote it. I wouldn't have, e that wouldn't have even occurred to me. No. <laughs> if someone had brought that up, I'd be like, "No, that's a terrible idea." Like, in, the, in a context where, like, go, like getting into a laundry mat, like, would make sense, is like a Hitman game. Yeah, because that's super. Yeah. That's like a five hundred IQ if you planned it. Yeah, and it's supposed to be like, and, and that's like you're supposed to explore the full extent of this area, figure out everything. You can disguise yourself as a laundry person. It's not you get stuck in the dryer. <laughs> Yeah, no, Agent 47's <laughs> way, way too good for that. <laughs> Agent 47 would never. Mm, he, he would never. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So! Laundry. Uh, but I do, I do think it's kind of funny that he's like, oh, yeah, because it's a bigger ship with a bigger staff. It must they'll, have a the, giant. A giant dryer. Yeah. Uh, also, like. Everyone puts their uniform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone does. And also, like. A dryer that size would have to be heated a lot more, so they'd have more problems than <laughs> dust bunnies. They'd have to worry about being cooked. I will have a new apprentice. It's powerful. <laughs> dust, 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 dust bunny. bunny. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 evil vibes from the stormtrooper outfits kind of all meshed together and infected the the, the lint, and it created a new entity <laughs> that to create. Life. <laughs> the diodes. Life. The diodes came together. <laughs> Darth Plagueis created living <laughs> dust. <by. laughs> Is it possible to learn this? <laughs> no. Not from a Jedi. Okay, so Frick completes the hack. Oh my fucking gosh! is now able to read the message inscribed on the dagger. I want to point out he hasn't lost his memory yet. Wait, what? He the hack goes through. He still has his memory, and he gets to read the dagger. And we're coming up to a point where he will then lose his memory. Why did they? My question is why? I did think they it would really... be. I genuinely think it would be more heartbreaking if they do the hack. He loses his memory, and, and then, then a droid it. meets them. And is like, "Hello, I am C three PO." And then they're like, "This dagger." And he's like, "Oh, okay. Who are you?" Yeah. Why are you ordering and this? And they're like, like we're your friends. Thing. Oh, that's nice. And reads it. Like, that'd be yeah. way more heartbreaking. Oh, that's, yeah. And just like, all right, well, this see you in a bit. But best read this before I die. <laughs> and somehow the mechanics work that way where it's like, oh, your memory yeah. doesn't need to be wiped for you to read it. Apparently not. Or is it like, it's like, like don't do it at that I'm point. Like, I'm like, is it like, oh, I... It, I do this, I hack it, but I can't download the next iOS update. <laughs> like, is that how this works? <laughs> Your phone's hacked and you can't download the new update? Then you, that works. So this action, cre reading the dagger apparently creates the red-eyed C-3PO seen in the trailer. I don't know how. Because it's a Sith dagger. I, sure, I'm because... Sure. <laughs> the translated text points them to the location of the Emperor's own Wayfinder. That is two wayfinders. Whatever the so, heck what a, is a wayfinder, wayfinder is, I don't know if it's a compass. Yeah. There's um, in freaking oh, I the know. Star it's, Wars Battlefront Two campaign, the new one, the crap one by yeah. di, by uh, EA. Luke has a compass that he's like thinks oh. is really important, <laughs> right. and he's like, "This is this is the Emperor's compass." <laughs> And it like points. He went camping. It apparently compass. like points to stashes of Sith artifacts yeah. for some reason. Yeah. 
And he just casually mentions it. He's like, yeah, that's important. Performance. It's like, okay. And then they just move on. And I always thought that that was supposed to be setting something up in Last Jedi. Back when I didn't realize how bad things were. Or like in Star Wars Battlefront 3, that will never happen. <laughs> Anyways, well, even if it is, if it's something like that, I just don't get why they'd have one of these. Yeah, I just Kelpie set it up because he's like, oh, doesn't make sense. Ray is going to find my wayfinder and then I can make her my new. <laughs> yes, yes, I mean, it's all part of my plan. <laughs> my only theory is like it's like Pathfinder's like robot cousin from Apex Legends. <laughs> like that's the only thing I can come up with. That's how disjointed this is. What's what's the line that Lifeline says all the time? What's one of her famous lines? Oh, um, I don't know. I haven't played Apex. Okay, whatever. Wow. It's okay. I just I want to. Mozambique, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I found the Mozambique. Oh, I hate that line. It was etched into my memory for <laughs> All right. The translated text points them to the location of the Emperor's own wayfinder. Having served his purpose, 3PO's memory wipe begins, okay. and he shuts down. Once the memory wipe is complete, 3PO reboots with a completely empty memory. While on Kajimi... Can I do that? I want to. <laughs> Kylo... Can I have my memories of Last Jedi taken away? <laughs> no, because then you'd be like, well, it can't be that bad, and then you'd watch it again. Oh, and suffer all over. I feel like I'd believe you enough if you're just like... Just, just like don't. Or along, if I... Write along notes yourself. Yeah. Like, I literally wiped my memory so I wouldn't remember this film. If you trust yourself at all... Do not watch this Don't again. Watch again. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> While on Kajimi, Kylo initiates... Wait, he's here too? Wait. The heroes of the Resistance make their way to the snow-dusted plan of Kajimi. While on Kajimi, Kylo... Oh, it's just bad grammar. Okay. While on Kajimi, Kylo initiates another mind bond with Rey. So he's not there, but Rey is. He's somewhere else. He initiates a mind bond with Rey to try and divine her location a second time. Kylo spends much of this time antagonizing Rey. Some of the, this conversation revolves around her parents and the truth behind the dagger. It was once used to murder her parents. Many years ago, Ochi was sent to murder Rey's parents, who were trying to hide Rey from the galaxy. Ochi succeeded, leaving her parents as nobodies to be forgotten by that galaxy. Where Ochi failed was with Rey. He could not find her, so he left her behind on Jakku. She Jin Ursoed part two. She <laughs> hid in a cave until they left. <laughs> <laughs> he could not find her, so he left her behind on Jakku. This is what remem- what Ray remembers, the ship leaving in the wake of her parents' murder, not her parents abandoning her. So how does he not how does she not remember her parents living and then being killed? I mean, that'd be pretty traumatic. Kiddo, like, the t- flashback shows her being dragged away by Unkar Plutt, that, I mean, that one half portion guy yeah, in Force Awakens, him. being dragged away There's by him when she's away. like five years old, looking up at the ship and saying, Wait, come back. Yeah, I mean, That's not her parents' ship. No. That's Ochi's ship. I mean, if she Why saw. Why does she care? If she saw the body, I mean, sure, like, if we added, like, a couple scenes, I feel like this could be justified. Like, we're like, oh, the bodies were taken with him? Yeah, maybe like, if he, like, cut... Maybe JJ's gonna give a flashback and cut it together in such a way that the line kind of sort of works. Yeah, and then, like, oh, and then, like <laughs> earlier, the... the, the and it's like, oh! The half it means po- that, which no one could have guessed. And the half-portion <laughs> yeah. guy, like, was like... Keeps eyes out for orphans, and he's like... He's oh, actually oh, a oh, joke. I mean, it. Come with me. Wait! Uh, what? Huh? Oh, well, no, I, I feel like he, he's, like, Plages. taking advantage of the situation. Like, he's getting a new slave. I mean, it really seemed like he... It really seemed like Rey had been left with him in Force Awakens. I like, mean. that's what the implication I thought was. Yeah. Was that he's, like, pulling her away, and she's, like, reaching out to the ship that's flying off in the opposite direction. I always thought he was, like, taking advantage of the situation to get a, a new... Because, because I mean, everything that like is confirmed, like we saw in the film, is he's very like he's he's just there to make money. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, it seemed to me like he had been sold to her, or she had been sold to him. Yeah. So, or maybe yeah. maybe the dude, the the Uchi Gucci dude, like <laughs> so, sold or told him like, hey, I'll sell this girl to you if you just take her away. Or wait, no, that wouldn't but, make any oh, sense. But Uchi yeah. didn't find no, Ray. So wait, he didn't see Ray. 
He looked around, went, okay, hopped in his ship and left, and Ray was and she's like 100 feet like, away what? saying, come back. Come back, Ochi. Come back and kill me. Yeah. That doesn't make With any dagger. sense. What else doesn't make sense? Ooh. Why is the dagger he's using to kill her have Sith messages on it leading to the Emperor's Yeah. Pathfinder? Why? That doesn't track at all. It's like you're combining two MacGuffins. At least it didn't add another <laughs> MacGuffin. Oh, but... adding two MacGuffins. <laughs> Okay. It's like, okay. So yeah, I, I mean, I do appreciate the brevity of just combining the two MacGuffins. Ray lashes out at Kylo during this bond, and their lightsabers clash. Having gotten everything he needed from Ray during this session, somehow he cuts off the the bond. The Star Destroyers arrive on Kajimi after having followed our heroes there. So he started a bond with her. Figure out where she was. But unbeknownst to him, First Order Star Destroyers had already followed them to Kajimi. Mm -hmm. Because they arrive after he cuts off the bond, having followed them there. According to this. That could just be written poorly. Yeah. Uh, so, wait, wait. But the line, having followed them there, makes it sound like he's just doing this while his Star Destroyers are en route there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, he knows. What's the point? And then they have tracked them from huh. whatever Lando's planet was? Because they were there. Too. Well, it sounds like that's what they did. Yeah. And Kylo's like, well, I don't know where they're going, so I'm going to call Ray on Force Skype. And he does. Have a kinky And they're like, no, Ky Kylo, we're, yeah. we know where they are. We're almost there. Like, give it five minutes. He's like, no, I want to call her. <laughs> I miss her. I want to <laughs> Kylo is really underused. As, like, I need my rays of sunshine. He's the most valuable new character because he's directly related to the But, like, OG. that is a low bar. Yeah. Like, sure, I will absolutely agree. He's the only thing about these movies that is in any way valuable. But, like, there's barely anything he's been there. Wasted. There's yeah, barely a anything lot of, there. A lot of waste. Yeah. It's a, it's like, a, every movie that's just... That's sad that he's been handled. What joke are you about to make? I, Thought you were trying to get get to a pun. Yeah, I was gonna say something. I didn't formulate it in time, but like, it, there's more ways in a porta potty than these films. Or no. Been no, so no, long. no, 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 other way around. That's what I couldn't compute. There's more waste in these movies than a porta potty. That's, yeah, that's for sure. See, that's how I formulate jokes, but it's usually a little bit faster. Okay. Um. As Kylo makes his way down to the planet. Okay, so yeah, he was on the Star Destroyers that just arrived Bro, there. Wow. <laughs> maybe he needs to figure out where he was on the planet. He just didn't want to talk in maybe, person. Maybe that's what it was supposed to be. What? They could find the Millennium Falcon on the other planets. Zori helps the Resistance. Yeah. Yeah, oh, they yeah. did. Zori helps the Resistance escape. So again, we're escaping from the First Order, arriving on a planet we're on. <laughs> Third time. By employing the use of something described to me as a First Order passage device. Something that transmits a signal recognized as friendly to the First Order, allowing the ship to pass uninterrupted. That just seems like an identification So that's system. Yeah, that's called a friend or foe tag. We've had those in the military for years, for like like, like a really long like time. World War One. We tech. don't need to have it called Actually, a passage device. I think it's often called flags, like like in old ships they have like these, yeah, like, like emblems, <laughs> literally and like, flags and like passwords. We this is even in Return of the Jedi. It's an old code, sir, but it checks out. I don't know. Fly casual. <laughs> Fly casual. Like, dude, Native American. Shuttle Tidarium. Like, it's like, dude, smoke signals. Like, <laughs> rebels, yeah, rebels have been doing this forever. They've been stealing Imperial ships and pretending to be Imperials uh. for such a long time. The reason this doesn't work this is... This is not new. I doubt there are many First Order ships based on Kajiku. <laughs> so if they see a ship flying away, they're going to be like, oh yeah, that's one of our friendly First yeah, like, Order ships just a, from the Yeah, planet. what do they think? There's like a First Order ship leaving as they arrive. They're like, oh, okay, Bye, see you, Johnny. Listen, oh yeah, let's well, my good friend Johnny. Lunch just, break already? Oh, what? <laughs> are you guys going to leave? Nice. <laughs> 
Nice. <laughs> We're here to take over, I guess. I'm I headed over to Coruscant on. for lunch. Oh, you know, yeah. Because hyperspace travel takes zero time in the sequel trilogy, and you can just travel from place to place in seconds. You know. <sighs> so, okay, so that all happens. Um, and, and we know, like, the ghost, too, from Rebels. Yeah. It could, it could uh, disguise its transponder signal, so people thought it was a different ship. Oh, sure. Um, which was, like, its special thing, and it clearly was, like, an expensive special installment thing. on that ship. What was that in? The TV show Rebels. Star Wars Rebels. Gotcha. Um, so we know that's a thing. It's not a new thing, and it's not called a First Order Passage device. And also, this is a context where that would not work. <laughs> so, uh, that's uh, wrong on all levels. Try again. Waste of time on a terrible concept. <laughs> As our heroes make their escape, we see the Palpatine's orders to Hux and Pride are being carried out as children are being rounded up by the soldiers of the First Order. No. Oh, do, 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 so they just show up on Kajimi and start stealing kids. What, when are we going to get, like, the heckin' um, broom kid back? Is he going to get stolen? Ryan Bro. Johnson's trilogy, probably. Bro, he got sent to this orphanage. He got sent to this or- orphanage. And so now he's fighting the bad guys with uh, with a hockey stick. He's moved it to hockey. That he can pull around with the force. Yeah. He's got like six of them, like boom, 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 boom. I hate him so much. He's so great. He's like, wow, I'm inspired by Luke Skywalker. And Ray. I can use the force. <laughs> my, like, my favorite thing about that is that no kid would be inspired by the end of Last Jedi. Like, if they heard that wow. story. Like, first off, I imagine mean, telling that story. I feel like. Well, uh, Luke showed up to save the day, but he just walked out there. Kind of distracted Kylo for a bit, and then he fucking died. He like distracted them, <laughs> and then a like, kid wow. hears a kid hears that is like, "Well, that's lame." <laughs> like, no, that's the guy. Know, that's you the know. guy that brought down the empire. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, mommy, yeah. can we go to the local Target and buy a Hasbro Luke Skywalker action figure?" You, because I love that when you story. Specifically from Last Jedi. When you put, him I in want the- to see him in that dumb gray cloak. When you put him in the kneeling position, he stands there for a few minutes and then dies. <laughs> it's my favorite feature. Really, if you make, if you cross his legs, he <laughs> literally disappears, including the, his robot hand. The, <laughs> yeah, uh, the action figure just wait, disappears. Yeah, wait, you missed his that hand doesn't fall. So hard. Ryan Johnson talked about that. He said that uh, in the editing room, they thought they someone suggested it to him, and he was like, "No, that would be funny. I don't want to do that." He thinks that a dramatic shot of Luke's hand falling to the ground would be funny. He thought that would undercut the moment with a joke. Not Luke throwing his lightsaber over his shoulder. Not all the other times throughout the entire movie where he uses bathos to undercut a dramatic moment with a joke. But that moment, he was like, no, that's too much. Even though you can make that... Watch Lord of the Rings. They have the ring fall onto the floor dramatically tons of times. What universe does Ryan Johnson live in? I don't know. He's... He's... Wow. Like, wow. I... And how does, also, how does he have that much power to, like, you know... Directors, my guy. Direct and write that film. Like, who gave him that because ability? Because like, with Kathleen Kennedy, probably. Mm. She, yeah. <laughs> he's got, mm. uh... And, and she's he's, really he's low. Set to and she low. has really... <laughs> she's got, she has low standards, and he has great fingers. Like, that's all he really needed, apparently. That pudgy little face, though. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Taking shots at his weight, huh? That's some people would find that rude. <laughs> Bro, I think Star Wars Last Jedi is rude. Like, I feel like he's made his side pretty clear. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> Bring your pistols at dawn. Let's let's settle this once and for all. <laughs> and also, like he's talked about how the decision to kill Luke was left to like the last moment, like. They didn't tell. Like, oh, you it know. It wasn't in the script killing, that he died? Killing, like, the most important character of your entire franchise mm-hmm. should be a last minute decision. Mm-hmm. Always, always last minute decision. He wasn't supposed to die in the script. And he in the editing room, they, like, were experimenting with him disappearing at the end. 
like someone suggested that, or like Ryan Johnson thought of it. He's like, let's let's do that, and then they did it, and he's like, uh, maybe he's not. safe uh, if he's gone, and then they did it, and he's like, yeah, that's seems like that. That's great, and of course, I think there's that rumor that Colin Trevorrow was like, um, Ryan. I broke my script already, and Luke is in it. What's wrong with you? And Ryan's like, uh, I'm not changing. It. I want to have my movie. Uh, do do, rewrite yours. Even though, when JJ wrote the ending of Force Awakens, he had Luke, meditating, in the air, lifting boulders around him with the Force. But Ryan was like, uh, actually, JJ, in my script. Luke has cut himself off from the Force because that's a thing that's possible to do. Um, so I can't have you doing that in this movie because that won't be consistent with mine, even though I don't care about consistency. But uh, in this case, I do. And J.J. was like, okay, sure. I'm a nice guy. So, yeah. That's a thing. I feel like Ryan Johnson's, like, uh, psychic attack stat... <laughs> Is like at god levels of of high. Because my brain is just in pain. Yeah, that's in so. That's I know. This is a massive psychic and attack. He's like meditating and lifting boulders. That's so cool. That's what he's supposed to be doing when oh Ray gosh. shows up on the island at the end. He's supposed to be there, that and she been comes up behind so him. Yeah, sick, bro. Because JJ specifically wanted to show how strong Luke has become. Yeah, and Ryan was like, uh, uh, no, no, I want uh, Luke to be lame. I so hate cool. Luke. He's my leak. Freaking everybody liked Luke, and I just I always you know liked people would have made fun of the Empire Strikes Back if it came out nowadays. My God, I hate that he said that. Dude. You know, Luke got beat he up. Th- he would have. He said in an interview, he was like, uh, "It would have Empire Strikes Back would have been torn to shreds if it came out today." Like, no, it's a good movie. <laughs> it would not have been. It wasn't torn to shreds, but but then like. Not only did he say that, and Last Jedi Defenders parrot that, but they also say that it was, in fact, torn to shreds. Everybody hated it when it came out, and everybody hates Last Jedi when it came out. Are they out. retconning so history? So obviously they're going to they- like it eventually. Are people still trying to rewrite history? Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. They're like, well, Empire Strikes Back is considered a masterpiece, but people hated it when it came out. So the same thing will happen to Last Jedi. I mean, like, sh- no, may- maybe someone not did, hate, but like, like, the mass yeah. populace was like, Hey, you know that whole like like def, def, definition of like culture in the moment, like people being like, "Oh yeah, this is one of the defining moments of our culture." That was that as movie. As far as I'm aware, people loved Empire Strikes Back when it came out. There's like a compiled list of like supposed proof that people hated that movie when it came out, and it's like a list of like twelve. A book club. I mean, critical at- articles, and it's like. A tw- yeah. Twelve. You can literally yeah. watch any, like, f- any footage yeah. from Return Dude. of the Jedi opening night. Like the turnout there was massive. <laughs> yeah, like I don't think if people hated Empire. If Strikes people Back, hated Empire, they would not have gone to Return of the Jedi in droves. People aren't going to Rise of Skywalker in droves. Yeah. I mean, not, the we'll, freaking we'll see. the Black Widow prequel movie trailer. We you know that came out two days ago. <laughs> it has more likes. The one I, video I know, like that little... in two day in no in at the end of that day it came out and by the end of the day it had more likes than the first Rise of Skywalker trailer that came out months ago. Oh. <laughs> like that's amazing! Holy crap! Like, just imagine living in 2012 and someone's like in 2019 a Black Widow film. Is going to beat the The ninth Star Star Wars Wars movie. movie. Way to go, Disney. Oh, Disney. What? What have you done? Disney, what have you done? Just like... Just in general. Just, my God. It's incredible how much they have run this franchise into the ground. Mm. It's... People always say... It's... Talk about how hard it is to make a Star Wars movie. Freaking... Give me the damn writer's chair and I will make you a good movie. It is not hard. <laughs> no. It is way easier than people think. Yeah. Yeah. Especially especially when you have like probably everyone who's been through film school in the last 30 years has 
idolized or watched and enjoyed the Star Wars film. So you have every filmmaker of all of, that is in the industry right now who will work with you. Mm-hmm. You have all the money in the world, mm-hmm. and you have as many people as you have all the professionals that would love to help you. And you could take as long as you can as you want. You could develop uh, this film. I mean, if for like five years, and people would be looking forward to it. Like Disney's Disney, making Disney, enough Disney money would as probably is want that they to cash in on their no, on their investments. I get it. As possible. I but, get it. But they could do that, mm-hmm. and people would accept that. Right. Whereas you get Star Citizen, people forgot that game existed because they promised it would um, be out ten years ago. <laughs> And now everybody forgot that it exists I'm because like, it's been in development I was for hyped, so long. I was hyped for that game four years ago, and I have I forgot. But about like, it over if time. Disney was making a Star Citizen as a game, well, people probably would have forgotten about it too. At this point, but especially also, considering like, Disney's but, current but, state. But if Disney was respected and they had been making that game for like five years, people would be excited for it. But also, like, like Disney, we're excited D- for Elder Disney Scrolls. Disney would like push it out. Because push, yeah. Like Disney has like shareholders. And no, stuff. I get it, so but I'm just saying if Disney. they did it. I mean, it's we're talking hypotheticals here. We're uh, talking about if good Star Wars movies existed. <laughs> right. Wouldn't that made. be great? That would yeah. be nice. Be I would like some good Star Wars very movies nice. again. That'd be really, really good. Okay, so First Order Star Destroyer above Kajimi. As the heroes escape on Ochi's ship, the group makes the decision to use the passage device to board the Star Destroyer and recapture the Falcon. Because they know it's specifically on this one. That Kylo brought Out of what, what, the 50? I mean, I guess if it's the Star Destroyer that showed up and tracked them from the previous... They all look the same! (laughs) Unless... Oh, no, 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 Lucas, it has a, a very unique... Oh, what is it called? The first order identification signal that <laughs> was in whatever. It's it's like Thrawn's Star Destroyer. It's got yeah. a big painted symbol on the bottom. <laughs> sure. Um. Uh, also, the, that, this could be quite the paint job to like last through hyperspace. Like. <laughs> wow. Wow. The the device works as advertised, and the ship lands without question. On board. What? They they just let the ship in, even th- like sure I get that it's friendly, but they'd be like, oh, what the heck? Can we have? A- <laughs> uh, who are you? What? Why? Why do you want a board? What? New phone? What? Who did? What's? <laughs> are we gonna prank what? call? Do What's this weird prank call the ship? Who are you? Like you're a friend, I get that, but like, what's what? What's the but deal? It doesn't look like one of our ships, like at all. Uh... We're all fine here now. Thank you. Yeah, no, just how, how are, are you? you? <laughs> <laughs> just uh, we're cutting out. We will talk when I get on your ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending a squad down there. <laughs> like <laughs> the device works as advertised. Boring, boring conversation. Anyway, Luke, we're gonna have company. <laughs> uh, the device works as advertised, and their ship lands without question. On board the Star Destroyer, the droids log onto the ship's computer network to locate the Falcon. But in the process, they discover that Chewbacca is still alive. What? what? He was on a different prisoner transport ship the entire time. Oh my god. What a good twist! Which cell block is he in, by the way? <laughs> I guess if they're stealing kids. A one fourteen. Wait. One one three eight. One one three eight. Um. They wait, 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 what's the no? What's the Pixar one? It's not A one thirteen. It's A. Uh, no, A one thirteen's right. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. And one one three eight is the Star Wars the version Star of that. Mm. The team hatches a plan for a rescue mission, but but Ray splits off, feeling as if something is calling to her. Oh, right. Meanwhile, the other wow, what a bad decision! <laughs> I I don't Who know. I feel, her? I feel like going to the left, guys. Like, she's, she's like a toddler. She's kind of like I am going to help. I'm gonna oh, go oh, this oh, way. I have a feeling. It's like when Chewie wanted up. What do you have? A knife? No. <laughs> <laughs> When in doubt, Peregrine took. Always, Always follow your nose. That's what Chewie did earlier when he had the knife. He just wandered off. <laughs> Everyone's just, everyone just keeps wandering off. Stop splitting the party. It's the first rule of D&D. Meanwhile, 
The, yeah, I know, right? Meanwhile, the, we're this is the second act. This is the second. Oh, this is the middle of the film. We're actually gonna have to split this up into like three parts. Yeah. Meanwhile, the others find Chewie, but their rescue attempt fails, and they are all taken captive. Wow, what a great wow. idea, great idiots. Oh, that's because they didn't have Mary Sue with them. <laughs> It's yeah, true. That's it's true. true. Yeah, they would have been fine. And she's fine. She's just running throughout the ship. Yeah, she's she, fine. She's like, all by herself, <laughs> mind you. She's like, what? what's her face from Serenity, from Firefly? The girl? Who's oh, like, freaking. Wa- she like wandered like cluelessly like not understanding what's happening but then people attack her and she becomes and she super powered like, and, <clears throat> and she's walking and like force pushes them to be fair though in Firefly that is set up like that makes sense like yeah. she, she's like a plot to, she's like part of the plot of the show is that she's like super duper special and super innocent and like, and, like kind of out there and like I'm actually a kind of person who is not afraid to criticize Firefly like uh, uh, I like it a lot less than most people do, but that works. That part of the show is fine. <laughs> like, if you want to call her a Mary Sue, you could argue that, but also, it's not a problem for the show. Mm. Like, you can do powerful mm. characters, I and they does. can work. I think, but with her, she has a lot. She does have flaws. Like, oh yeah, for sure. That's part of it. That's okay. That's part of why it works. Okay. And yeah. Additionally, like, she doesn't have the power all the time. She doesn't know when she and can she use it. She, uh, well, she's a little bit crazy and a little bit... I mean, she has, like, the mental capacity of a seven-year-old. Sometimes. And then other times she's, like, a Greek philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Weird show. I only got through, like, until the first uh, sex scene. In the <laughs> because Bryce was It wasn't even that much. I was Bryce. very young, Bryce was, like, nine oh. when he... I know, they were, like, clothed and stuff, too. I, they were. It just, there's, there's, no, to- there's, there's no real t- nudity in that. Their yeah. tones were sensual, and Bryce got scared. I was like, he's like, lying on top of I her. Like, that, that sweet, sweet saxophone comes in, and Bryce is like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, this is oh, this isn't soon, PG dude. enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the calling Ray feels is caused by the dagger. Which draws her to it in Kylo's living quarters. Dagger, her living nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Does she find any of Kylo's, uh... uh what, what do you... Uh, finish your sentence. I, I, uh, it's not funny enough to finish. Fin- keep, keep going. No, fin- you have to finish it now. You started Prayer it. No. continue. You, no. All, t- all two people that watch this will be dying to know what you said. Yeah. All two of them. <sighs> it was a... Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. She finds all like Kylo's, like you know, sexual items. It really was like, that. It really was, it was that. I thought that. it was gonna have to be a little more. What did you think it was gonna be? Yeah, I, that's why I didn't want to say it. Sexual items. At least say sex toys. Condoms. I mean, sex toys. <laughs> sexual items. All of the like, above. At least. I'm the guy. Who just, <laughs> I just told you, you I whipped mean, down on a fully clothed you... sex scene. Okay, what do you expect? From me? <laughs> We just wow, had the yeah. exact laugh. Wow. <laughs> All right. Back on the surface of the planet, and having grown tired of a fruitless search for Ray, sexual, Ky- items. <laughs> sexual <laughs> items, Kylo initiates another force bond with her. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wow, she's in his quarters. Right okay. Oh. okay, okay. Oh, yeah, man, he's on the planet, and he calls her. He's like, what? That's my bed. <laughs> Get off of that. Wait, yes, yeah, so that's my Rage Against the Machine poster. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's my final record. Just, Wait. Don't, just don't go into my second drawer to the right, please. <laughs> just, Keep out of the sock me. drawer. Oh, oh. I can't. Now I gotta look in your sock drawer. Okay. My subconscious mind is. Feel free, I guess. I'll be back, all two of you. He's going in my sock. It's listeners. the bottom one, just so you know, okay. of the big cabinet. That's it's it. I was going to start on the top, but I don't know. It's just socks. Are they, are they organized by... Uh... I, I don't keep my socks in my sock drawer. <laughs> That's very conspicuous. I'm an 18-year-old boy. I don't put clothes where they're supposed to go. I do. They're all meticulously placed and color-coordinated. Hey, okay, well, I, mean, I, <laughs> I put clothes on to my be body, fair, but that's I, about I, it. <laughs> to be fair, I, the closet is, has a very neat 
organization of clothes. Yes. That cabinet. It, I don't put my clothes in there, the clothes I want to wear in there, because it makes them smell. It makes them smell like, cause it smell that wood in there. Yeah. Of like that cabinet. And it makes them smell like that. Is that but like <sighs> really intense and it's bad. Oh, okay. It smells bad. It smell that bad. So. Cool. So now that that happened. We chatted about your dresser. He discovers that she is on his Star Destroyer. <laughs> I want to see that reaction to the film. He's like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, no. <laughs> That's my ship. Hey. 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 Uh, he's just the only reaction. Hey. Don't, don't, hey. Look, don't look at my browser history. <laughs> oh. Kylo, you and, know you should use incognito tag. <laughs> And a lightsaber duel breaks out between the two of them across two different locations. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's oh man. Weird, but Wait. it's an interesting idea. Okay. Like, again, wrong. it would be cool in another story. Wrong sci-fi film. Yeah. Just the yeah. wrong yeah. place to totally do wrong this. wrong vibe. Kylo on the surface of Kijimi and Rey aboard the Star Destroyer. During this encounter, Kylo reveals that there is more to the story behind Rey and her parents. <gasps> Rey is the granddaughter of... Of Emperor Palpatine. Okay, sure. Uh, I feel like that's BS. I'm quite apathetic at this point. You know, of all the things to recover from Last Jedi, you don't need to save the fact of that her parents are... All dead. the theories you could have chosen to follow. You went for the Ray Palpatine angle? That's just incredible. I don't... I, I don't like, know why they're still I, talking I, cool about her parents. all of this being real, but not that. I just don't feel like her parents are, they're overhyped to that whole arc. I mean, well, because she- People were disappointed Because she Jedi, deals but. with it in Force Awakens. Yeah. Her whole thing is she, she doesn't want to know who her parents are. She doesn't give a, give a crap what her parents are. Like she's gotten over it. She wants to know if they're coming back. Yeah. And she decides that they're not going to in Force Awakens. That's the end of it. But Ryan Johnson got hung up on the fans uh, on the fact that fans wanted to know who her parents were because that was a way to explain her overpoweredness and everybody really wanted to explain that to make yeah. the film good. And he got hung up on that. So he made her obsessed with finding the answer to who her parents were in Last Jedi, which doesn't make sense. She doesn't care. She doesn't even care if they're coming back anymore. She moved on. That is done. That plot line ended in Force Awakens. And then he brings it back in the wrong way and then deals with it in the wrong way. And J.J. has brought it back again and deals with it again in the wrong way again. Yeah. So thanks, you guys. <sighs> he tells her that they are meant to join together on the dark side and it's all part of the Emperor's plan. It's clear that by this point in the story, Kylo is fully committed to what the Emperor's mission is for him. What an arc for Kylo. Yeah. What what is he thought? Uh, like, oh, I'm gonna kill my dad, so I'm fully immersed in the dark side. He's going, Last Jedi, I'm confused. I uh, can't from, kill my mom. I uh, my dad's a jerk, but I can't do it to my mom. Dude, Kylo's like just going from one manipulative like like um, master, master to, to another. A, to another. Yep. And I'm like, his whole thing from, from Last Jedi was like I'm free from them. I'm going to rule well, myself. Yeah, so he's with singing you, Force Rick? Awakens. And now he's just like, he's oh, being obsessed crazy. with the past. Yeah, with Being Vader. obsessed with Vader and trying to be him. Rey literally has a line where somehow she reads his mind. And she says, you're afraid you'll never be as cool as Darth Vader. And he's like, oh, how dare you? I'm going to go smash and a console to bits. <laughs> and then brought every Xbox gamer. Like he literally keeps the helmet of Darth Vader and prays to it. And then in Last Jedi, he literally says, "Let the past die," for no reason. Oh. There's no follow through. There's no moment that ch turns his arc towards doing that. You could do that. You could make that interesting of having him obsessed with the past. And then turning him into so a guy like, oh, who gotta... hates the past and wants to get rid of it and just move forward. You could do that, but you need to actually have like a scene where at least one scene, if not spend the entire film changing him into that person. And then yeah. in the third film, don't have him <laughs> blindly be subdued by a character who's in the past further than he was alive. Yeah, and he, he's like, like he's, at the end of Last Jedi, he's like, let the past die, let's destroy the Sith and the Jedi, let's just make a new thing, which, I, 
I'm personally not a fan of that, but whatever. Like, I understand it, that I don't it was want that a new happen. angle and people wanted it. I don't want it to happen either. But no, no, like, we don't but want it, but, like, for him wanting it, that makes sense, and I'm cool with him Theoretically, it's, it's it's interesting. And then, by the end of that film, he's back into First Order, Crush Rebels, Oh, hey, I'm I'm Supreme Leader. No. I feel like we we all kind of knew that this was going to happen because of the, 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 the goof-up of Last Jedi. Like, J.J. started off the, the trilogy well and then it got messed up in the middle and now he's gonna kind of have to reset it oh yeah no everyone knew that jj would have to do damage control but he's yeah. like he's resetting it the everything. entire film is damage oh. control yeah it really is so and i respect him for it's all a really, massive undertaking you know i can't like praise his work i don't know you could do better but <laughs> you could you could do better <laughs> i think a lot better than this i think but under the context of the pressure he's probably under yeah. And, you know, the crea- even just the crea- I mean, I just find it hilarious that in an interview, he, like, this, he literally, publicly, in an interview, said his thoughts on, the, on making this film was, fuck it, I'll do whatever I want. <laughs> like, he li- that's literally yeah. what he said. Yeah. He said those words. Which is hilarious. And, as a, and... Really unsettling as a thing to hear from the guy wrapping up the Star Wars trilogy is whatever. <laughs> I've heard a lot too that he's talking about, like, you know, we have to wrap up the whole saga, not just the three films. It's PR talk. But it's like, I mean, if it is what he thinks, sure, but I'm not going to praise you for thinking what you should think. I'm like, I'm pretty sure <laughs> one of the only valid, like, valid. The defenses of of this film actually having holding some water and being pretty decent will be the like the idea I've heard way too many times this past year is that art is never movies are never finished they're only released. You heard that one? Yeah. Well, it's I haven't heard that in defense of these movies. I've I've George Lucas has said that in about the original trilogy. Like when people thought they were like, "Why do you keep releasing special editions?" and he's like. Well, art is never finished. It's just published, and, and I want to keep working on it. Which, which is fair, <laughs> because but when you release a, a bad film, I I'm like I get, I I'm waiting for the tweets and for people to post be like, oh, it just wasn't finished yet. <laughs> it's like okay, <laughs> but it's out it another ten years. <laughs> I'm like it's yeah, give it <laughs> if you gave it ten more years. Of work. Just watch it forty times, and then you'll love it. Then you'll love it. And you just don't understand it. It's not hard to understand Last Jedi. What's hard to understand is how the how any of the movie works. It's easy to understand what it's trying to say. And like and if and I'm like if my sum, sum, synopsis of it is wrong, please explain enlighten me. <laughs> Apparently I can't figure out a kid's film. So that's what it is. That's what you think it's good for. <sighs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, the freaking Star Wars is for kids. Freaking! I mean, now it's it a is. movie about space wizards intended for kids. I hate that sentence so I much. Believe, I don't believe Star Wars was ever intended for children. No, because if it was, it wouldn't have gotten a good budget. At it's the intended for all ages. Because <laughs> George Lucas and, and along with Steven Spielberg, they're of a a mindset from like that specific generation of directors that. 12-year-olds have a lot more brains than you think they do, and they can handle a lot more than you think they do. And or at least they used to So be when to George be Lucas right. has that, fa- that famous quote where he says, Star Wars is it's a movie for 12-year-olds, when he said that, that's like, he's not thinking about what we're thinking about. when we, yeah. If someone said a movie for 12-year-olds nowadays... It's like... I oh, mean, like, oh, Ice Age mean, 5. Uh, or tra- like, Transformers. Like, yeah. But yeah. no, George Lucas's day and Steven, Sp- Steven Spielberg's day, mm-hmm. that meant like, E.T. and Goonies and Star Wars and Indiana Jones and Hook and uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. All those really great 80s... I think those are all 80s movies. 80s yeah. and 70s. 80s and about. 70s. 80s and 70s movies that anyone can enjoy them. They're best suited probably for early teens because 
the the sense of wonder there is best for that age and there's there's this sense of adventure and and heart in them that I th- is best suited for that age but anyone can enjoy them they're not pandering they're not they have deep thoughts in them that anyone can figure out but they're simple to understand and they're they they don't talk down to you right they're not dumb they don't ma- they don't not make sense they're perfectly a, well structured films, yeah. and they're just stories. Like they're not stories made for a, you know a very specific person. It's just a story. It's a story anyone that can, is can be to taken enjoy. in by anyone. Yeah, yeah. anyone. You, it doesn't matter what age you are. You can still understand a good story. Yeah, and follow a good character that you like. And what really irks me about that quote, especially, is not just that it's insulting to Star Wars when people say, "Oh, it's a movie about space workers and training for children," but uh, also that it's. They're insinuating that we shouldn't give our kids good content. That yeah. movies for kids inherently are bad, and we shouldn't care that they're bad. Or like the, the, because they're kids and they're too dumb to understand bad stuff. Which no. Which also you're then agreeing that it's a bad movie. Yeah, there's. But saying it doesn't too. matter that it's a bad movie. Yeah. In which case, get out. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, like, we're, you're, you're not, we're not having the same conversation. Like, Pixar, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Four yeah. kids. All the time releases fantastic movies. I just watched that, Finding Nemo the other day. And, like, recently, so they've moving. gotten a little worse. But used to be they would consistently release Really good movies. Yeah. Now Sony's that are doing it. really emotional and really, really masterful storytelling. And they're for kids. And that's amazing. That's exactly the content we should give kids. Yeah, like good films should it's quite literally, it is more important to give kids good films than it is to give adults good films. Yeah, because because adults like because adults will be like, "Oh, that sucked." <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> or, or you'll be like, "What? Probably what most adults were, I think, in like the eighties, just like, bro, I'll pay money to go see Arnold Schwarzenegger shoot at stuff." <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger just like, "Yeah, yeah go to Chopper da, 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 for two hours." Da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah Arnold. Yeah, yeah. just like, even I, I yeah. clap. I clapped. I clapped. And I'm like, they're fun and they have their place. I hate the guy that came up with that quote. Which one? His name is Patrick Willems. He's a... Which quote I meant? Uh, Space Wizard. Movie that Space Wizard was intended for children. Oh. Um, he's, he's just an absolutely terrible YouTuber. Just... Awful. Oh, content. oh, we're quoting YouTubers. Is that the age group? Well, <laughs> well, yeah. No, no. I, but I, also, I want to like, go uh, dislike bomb his his channel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody, go dislike him. Send him hate mail. Uh, yeah, he gets don't, an, he gets an influx of don't uh, to grant total of uh, five uh, to, dislikes. <laughs> don't do that. If anyone eventually watches this, don't send him hate mail. I, you can dislike his videos. No. That's fine. Probably do do that, but don't. Yeah. Send him you know, give him uh, constructive criticism that yeah. he won't pay attention to. You can to. tweet at him and say, hey, this is a really bad thing you said, and here's why. And then he'll tweet at you and be like, lol, because he <laughs> literally does that. It's like, well, you're dumb. <laughs> and, like, he literally sells the shirts with this movie about space wizards intended for children on it. and Because he said it in a video once, and he thought people, when they talked about it, liked it. And... Of course, all the sequel trilogy defenders then use it as, like, their freaking catchphrase. But everybody who knows what's what is like, that's dumb. (laughs) You can leave. He's also the guy who has a video called Plot Holes Don't Matter, where he literally argues that the plot of a film is irrelevant and all that matters is if emotional arcs work, which... Mm. Are okay. tied intrinsically to the plot. I'm like, okay, so, so I feel like this guy and like the rest of the planet have a misunderstanding. Uh, he has a misunderstanding of what the point of films are. <laughs> what the point he, of stories in are. In his freaking video, he says, Now I don't want to tell you that you're watching movies wrong, but you're watching movies wrong. I mean, it, and then he's, sure part of the, he's part of the same group of people who will then tell, like, sequel criticizers that they're the people who say you're watching films wrong 
but then they tell you you're watching film. Like, have some self awareness, please. <laughs> yes, I think yeah, we have to shit in the mirror for complimenting, <laughs> or maybe set up a webcam or something. He shows his face in all his videos. He has to watch that when he plays when he edits it. Maybe he gets maybe his, get someone else to edit. Yeah, he gets his mom. <laughs> It gets his mom. Mom, can you edit my video? I don't know how. I can't figure out how to get the webcam. And the, <laughs> oh, mom, you can get the, the audio button. linked up. I can't <laughs> figure it out. Mom, get the camera. Mom, it's still recording. Turn it off. Can I use my, ex- turn, can I I use my Xbox Live mic to, to record <laughs> videos? Okay. This is not a Patrick Williams dunking podcast. This is <laughs> no, a, we gotta keep what, going with yeah, Rise of Skywalker no, Leaks no, no, podcast. This is our, our, our this white uh... disc tra- diss track podcast. <laughs> this is how white people do diss tracks. We do podcasts about other people. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, all right. Uh... Once Rey and Kylo's force bond duel ends, Kylo makes his way back to his ship and Rey grabs the dagger and, Chuba- and Chewbacca's bandolier and bolt. Bolt caster. Uh, it oh. says bolts. I think he means bolt caster. Cool. Don't know how she got those or where they were or they why. Were in a, they were in a, a they locker were somewhere. by Chewie's cell. Kylo right kept them in his room. I don't. No one knows why. They were just in... They were like on okay. his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, mm, this bowcaster. <laughs> um, Ray bumps into a fresh minded C3PO along the way. They brought him in. They brought him okay. into the. Because we all know that worked out. Wait. And now he's just well. wandering. Wait, 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 wait. But Cause... they were all captured. Yeah. We didn't know Ray wasn't. But C3PO was. Was. Did C- maybe C3PO went with Ray. Or maybe he stayed on the ship and now he's just wandering? Because they didn't search the ship. And then she hands him Chewbacca's effects that have been, and, and the dagger and tells him to make a run for it while she stalls Kylo. Okay. When it appears that all is lost for our heroes that have been captured by the First Order, General Hux arrives and surprisingly not only allows them to escape but points them in the direction of the Falcon. Okay. Hux was the mole within the First Order that Finn and Poe had received information from. That's why we have that middleman in the first act, so that we can have the reveal that Hux is the mole in the second act. Yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with that. No, it doesn't make any sense that Hux is a mole. It doesn't make any sense at like all. Like, if they're no, trying... he was pretty passionate they, with his Nazi speech. And yeah, if he can cre- he's crying. He's a mole. He's like... Like... He's, he's so into it. Bro, he, he... This man gets an Oscar for, like, being... He's, like, the best mole of all time. Starkiller base fires, and he sheds a tear of joy. Like... I well, I mean that. But Lucas, maybe it was oh, a, that, oh maybe, maybe it was, it was a tear, tear of, of real sadness because he knew he just sentenced trillions of people to die. And and yeah, okay. He, so if they're implying he was a mole the whole time, bad. If, if they're if they want to talk about that after Last Jedi, then he switched. We can talk. That's that okay because he saw some work. goofy crap in the end of Last Jedi. Because <laughs> I like Hux. <laughs> I enjoy Hux as a, the actor and the, the performance. I enjoy Hux. Yeah, but it's fine. As much as he's been written into a complete hellhole. Yeah, yeah. He at least has something in Force Awakens. Like, he has a sort of interesting bit, like, you know, because Darth Vader and uh, Tarkin, they have, like, a power structure of Tarkin commands Vader in New Hope. Yeah. But then in Force Awakens... Kylo and Hux are kind of on the same they're level. They're equals, and they're, and they're vying for power. there's thus tension there, and that's kind of, that was kind of interesting. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I was looking forward to, to see where that, where that went, and then, it, it, no. and then Ryan Johnson was like, Hux is funny. I, I'm gonna, Hux is funny. Wait, I'm gonna wait, have look, him be guys. slapped around. So I guess there was a Star Wars movie before this? I don't know. And there was, this, <laughs> there was this guy with red hair. I think he'd be really fun to make fun of. <laughs> Look at him, he's got a really funny face. <laughs> uh, uh, what? <laughs> so I was scrolling through the internet. Apparently there was a Star Wars movie before this, and people have all these opinions on it. <laughs> so uh, I, I want to all these theories. All their I have not heard of that. I don't know what the other movie was about, but I'm just going to write a movie that denies all these theories, and that's going to be the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. 
Um, okay, so Hawks is a mole. I yeah, yep. that could be all right. Ray and the other heroes make a break for the Falcon and escape. After they leave, Kylo kills Hawks for treason against no. the Force Order. Oh, so, Hawksy baby. Goodbye to that. I guess no reason to move that plot forward and do something interesting with that. Right, From yeah. this point forward, right. I would like to see Hawks have like continued to help. Maybe he shoots at Kylo a few times. Maybe he hurts him. Ben gets killed, or maybe he doesn't die. Maybe he switches to the resistance and pays for his sins. I don't know. I know, he, Lucas, he yeah, paid he for his sins by letting them go. That was his great... Oh, yeah, job. real real good. Yeah, nice job. They would have found another way. <laughs> they have got Ray. Ray. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hux, I'm so From sorry. From this point forward, General Pride is the sole commander of the First Order military. Wait, what's she proud of? Soul commander. Does it ever explain what she exactly she's proud of? Just like the First Order? Or is it, the Emperor contacts this... Pride and demands that he use one of the... I'm just ignoring you. <laughs> he use okay. one of the specially equipped Star Destroyers to destroy Kajimi as an act of loyalty. And Pride complies. Okay. So we blow up that film. That planet. That film. <laughs> That's what Ryan That's, already, right. That's, That's already, already done. Uh, blow up that planet for some reason. Fun. Cause they were, I cause, forgot why they were even there. Why were they there? Because it takes great action loyalty to press buttons. Also, Knights of Ren, they haven't been done. Oh, yeah. They were on Pasana, and mm. they haven't shown up again. Thanks, JJ. Uh, they were on Kajimi because Dude. Zori Bliss brought... No. That's where they found little Frick guy. No. Poe brought them to Zori Bliss, who was there. And was like... And Poe was like, hey, so... I heard you were good with hacking. And she's like, no, you're wrong. But I know a guy who's good with hacking and he happens to be on this planet. <sighs> the information gleaned from C-3PO's translation of the dagger's writing leads to the location of a third Wayfinder device. Mm, how many MacGuffins we on? Five? Five? Six? Which turns out to be aboard the wreckage of the second Death Star on the forest moon oh, of Endor. Yeah, okay, so in. there's no wreckage. I'm just gonna call bullshit on that. Watch the film. Did, yeah, did you see that fireball film? consumes all? <laughs> <laughs> there, there is dust. Yeah. There is nothing left of that that star uh, that Death Star. I'm not saying it's realistic that there's nothing left of it, but there's nothing left of it. No yeah. Way. I mean, and don't retcon and if it, the, the effects in those films. Yeah, don't, and like, don't touch them. Yeah. The, the piece we see on Endor in the trailer is huge. It's yeah. massive. It's yeah. like a good, took some, like, fifth of the, of the Death Big Star. Big chunk of that ocean or whatever. And this is the second, the second one, yeah. Which is, what, a lot bigger, so maybe it was a smaller. Well, bigger, but it was also busted to begin with. But, like... No, but like you see, it's got part of the the dish, like the firing oh, array. Oh yeah! It's like got basically half of that, and part of the the station going back, and Bitch. it's like that's a lot. That is a very large piece. When what? that landed, that would have caused a very very large like, explosion the, and crater. The Endorian firestorm, the 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 firestorms after. Uh, after the Battle of Endor, like, in the extended universe, are insane. Like, I, Endor's, like... Oh, you're actually talking about the real stuff that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, like, I was gonna mention that. Yeah, like, the Firestorms of Endor are insane, Endor. and they're a great part of extended and universe. I actually hate that. I'll be perfectly honest. <gasps> I think it's ridiculous that Endor suffers after Return of the Jedi just because of wreckage. That's a dumb, hard sci-fi plot point that we don't need in Star I... Wars. Because it gets turned to dust, Agreed. as we see. And I think it just shouldn't cause problems for I, the poor Ewoks. Yeah. I, that's I, dumb. I love the idea of, uh, it's a science fiction thing, and it's just like, oh, yes, shoot. Yeah, yes. There's, there's things that happen. If, I think if, If like, it was hard sci-fi, it would be good to see the consequence of a space battle like mm -hmm. that. But this is Star Wars, we shouldn't do that. And think, also, we see the Ewoks partying after the battle. Yeah, it's just dumb I that mean, it would rain... That, did the rebels get off and the G the, the Ewoks are like, bye bye, what's that? <laughs> and Endor is just completely burned and wiped out. And like, I just think that's dumb. Well, and I'm like, so, okay, so also, the Firestorms of Endor are extended universe. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to extend part of my universe 
And so, <laughs> so, the, so the Ewoks are intelligent creatures, mm-hmm. and so they evacuate and become refugees on another furry friendly planet. <laughs> And all their furries. Okay. All, all with other furry friends. Sure. And then they make a super race of Ewoks and <laughs> and uh, furry wolves and become a happy new race okay. called Furwalks. And, okay. <laughs> and the, 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 no one ever dies and everyone is happy. Ian's fanfic. And, and, can... and Endor is incinerated entirely. Well, you can you can extend your universe That's that my way. I'll extend my universe. That's my extended universe for that <laughs> to make myself feel better and sleep at night. All right. <laughs> um, moving on. Uh, <laughs> along their way to the wreckage, the crew comes in contact. The crew? with, I guess. The crew, Ray. The and heroes, Susie. I guess. Oh, yeah, the crew oh, comes yeah. in contact with a person named Janna. Another person? Another new She's person? just there. On the hills, just, just looking at the wreckage. Is this Lando's daughter? They just happened to show up here. It is revealed that she was press ganged into the First Order service as a oh, child, yeah. Yeah. but eventually escaped and found her way to Endor, where she has been living for some time. Mm. Also, she's black. At this time, it is revealed <laughs> that she is. The, no, also, she's no, black. No, no, okay. I, I added that. <laughs> Wait, what? At this time, it is revealed that she is the child that Lando lost to the First Order all those years ago. And Finn's like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Janna provides Ray with transportation to get to the Death Star wreckage. Why? Why does Janna find the... She's here for some reason, and these people come along, they're like, hey, we want to get to that big thing across the water. And Janna's like, sure, take my boat. She's, why is she on Endor? Why? She's why would black, you go to she's, Why is she here? She's, why did you go back to Lucas, your dad? don't you know she's black Endor Ray? She's scrapping through old wreckages of Black Endor Ray. Yeah, that apparently that's what she is. She scavenges and, and can get to the ship and We're gonna oh have gosh. We're gonna rename this trilogy to episodes 10, 11, and 12, and we're gonna have the prequel see the sequel prequels. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine with Janna on Endor. <laughs> and we're gonna She's recycle the there. same plots. Oh boy. <laughs> What is she doing there? That doesn't make any sense. Ray makes her way to the Death Star wreckage That's and begins really climbing her way through its twisted remains. One of my sources told me that the scene feels very reminiscent of the activities we see Ray doing when we were first introduced <laughs> to her in TFA. She eventually reaches the Emperor's throne room. Which is still intact somehow. Sure, or whatever, bro. Which is complete and utter Like the throne and everything? It. The throne. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just like it's like the throne room, like with just vines and tilted. Complete that's and exactly utter it's bogus. Be. It's still there's there. no way that's intact. No. no, not a chance. No. Hey, Luke, you didn't even have to get your father off the throne. <laughs> you could have just stayed there. Oh my god. <laughs> and they probably would have found out that Palpatine was still alive. Palpatine's just like. And he could have executed him and then gotten away. <laughs> he's still alive. <laughs> he's, he's doing that like. That villain walk, like you, like you know the, that the robber walk. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That vine where uh, there's this guy like asking a, a security guard, "Has this museum ever been robbed?" And he's like, uh, "I don't know, I don't think so." And then there's this yeah, guy yeah, in the yeah, background yeah. in like cartoon black and white uh, uniform with a sack over his shoulder that's like <laughs> tiptoeing away. <laughs> CSGO pops in, enemy spotted. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Ah. Uh, uh, and she discovers a chamber connecting to that room that contains the the second wayfinder. I don't know why they call it the second; it's the third. We've we've already seen wayfinder two. the third. I think we've got wayfinder. Or were they just time. talking about the emperor's wayfinder? Yeah, the dagger leads to the emperor's wayfinder. Oh, God. Right. So they didn't have his. Right. Yet. Yeah. Ray the dagger pr- like floats in the air and points in the direction. Why isn't, <laughs> why isn't the dagger just another wayfinder? Ray approaches the object and picks it up, which induces visions of a possible future for herself. In this vision, we see the version of Ray that has been enveloped by the dark side as seen in the the D23 footage. My sources have also told me that the voice of Palpatine may be heard during this scene. The vision shocks Ray, and she stumbles back into the throne room, where Kylo Ren is waiting for her. He's there now. Kylo takes possession of the Emperor's Wayfinder, destroys it, and indicates to Ray that the only way to get another white wayfinder is to go through him and take Vader's. A lightsaber battle ensues, beginning in the throne room and eventually transitioning to exterior wreckage among the crashing waves. 
The Resistance is jungle base. Off in another part of the galaxy, while Kylo and Kylo and Rey clash sabers, a bright light in the universe begins to fade. Leia's dying. Okay. For, That's a poetic, uh... For some, poetic some prose reason. There, um, before her death, we hear the voice of a familiar hero come to bid her farewell and pass on one last bit of knowledge. Apparently that's Luke. Also, in the reshoot notation this guy gave, he said they cut Luke talking to her as she dies, so... Okay. Thanks. So, is that, so okay, what I'm getting from this then... This is they well, cut Mark Hamill completely were, out of the movie. Right, and the, all the stuff they tease in the teasers, like... Helpy's voice is probably just on that wayfinder. Yeah. Sith Ray is just a stupid vision. Yeah. And Luke's line, like, confronting fear. Is it's probably Jedi this way. line. It's probably the line that they cut here. Probably. So, all these OT characters that they're teasing yeah, aren't going to be in it at all. Not in the movie, no. No. It's all, it's all to hype their nonsense. Oh! Lord my. knows why they couldn't just <laughs> actually put in those things. <laughs> it's not like they care about... Not being annoyingly fan service-y. Like, I don't know why they couldn't have actually the, just They just took the lamest, Luke. laziest fan yeah. service. Like, <sighs> fan, serv- like, fan service is the only thing you have left now. It's shocking how bad their decisions are. Like, they can't even make the right bad decisions. <laughs> they make the wrong bad oh, decisions. Boy. As their battle rages on, both Kylo and Rey sense the death of their respective mother and mentor. They both react, but Rey recovers from the shock sooner. That's, I mean, of course she does, but also it's not really surprising considering she barely knows her. Um, Why even go through shock? And (laughs) leverages the moment to to take Kylo's weapon from him and stab him through the chest with it. Yo, what? Wait. In the aftermath of their concluded duel, Rey declares to Kylo that she will never be like him and fall to the dark side. You just killed him, yo. That's fall into the dark side. Uh, she oh, exercise, oh, oh, oh. but but she exercises her newfound healing ability to save Kylo from death after intentionally killing him. Steal his, steals his ship along with Vader's wayfinder device aboard it and takes off, leaving her enemy behind. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, 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 she just had a temper tantrum, <laughs> murdered a guy. Like, oh crap, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, got away with murder. So I stabbed him. I'll never be like, oh crap. Oh, crap. And then she, you're okay. She's okay, married, bye. She, she literally Does she have to, to get touch away. the creature when she's healing it? Is it like, ooh, let me just touch Kylo's pecs? <laughs> <laughs> she has to rip off his shirt. Where does oh, it hurt? I, uh, yeah, here. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> here. 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 <laughs> I in Raiders, uh, Raiders style. I, I, I'm having an aneurysm uh-huh. because of this film. Uh huh. I told you, it's some. In some ways, it could give the Last Jedi a run for its money. Like I think it will be a more fun film to watch. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, in I terms still think of just I'm pure enjoy it to an plot. Errors? I, I don't know. The Last Just Jedi is really bad. bad. I it I don't know uh, if this is quite as it's bad. It's not gonna be there. It what this is is it has a lot of the like the same three errors over and over. It's like contrivance, convenience, and like teleportation. Just over and over and over and over and over and over. Whereas Last Jedi has like fifteen thousand things it does. <laughs> like every scene is a new writing foible. Yeah. As their battle rages on, both Kylo and Rey sense the... Uh, wait, I read that already. Are we still in Act 2 At, or 3? This is 2. Oh! After Rey leaves the forest moon, the remainder of the Resistance crew boards the Falcon, along with their newfound ally, Janna. She just joins them. Okay. For some Jana. reason. Okay, that's one of the things that's bugged me the most so far, I think. That's just such a half... <laughs> it's a terrible... It's Having terrible. spent the duration of Rey and Kylo's fight repairing the ship... Okay, and return oh. to the hidden base on the jungle planet. I didn't know it was broken. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe the this probably isn't hundred percent. Broken something. and defeated, Kylo Ren remains on the wreckage of the Wait, second but he Death just Star. Got healed. When, when he is visited by a vision of his father. Han speaks to his son. Telling him 
that it's never too late to return to the light and make the right choice. This conversation has a profound effect on Kylo, and in a symbolic gesture, he discards his lightsaber and walks away from darkness and the identity of Kylo Ren. Force goes on so long! <laughs> and he just turns like that! Okay, I'm calling BS on this. I don't believe, here's what I, I, I believe they make that writing choice. But I don't believe Harrison Ford would ever I, show up. Money, dude. He'd do it. I don't know. I think, uh, he, I think he would do it. You think it. he would? I do. I think he'd do it. Because I, I've seen this argument, too, where you're like, oh, Harrison Ford's such a grump. He's always wanted Han dead. He wouldn't come back. Well, here's the thing. It's For one, it's been way overblown how much he hates. I think he's just naturally like a get kind of a grump person. Yeah. And then he Never absolutely super he's plays a, it up. There's a, no way he doesn't play that He's up. a bit of a curmudgeon, which is fun. Oh, yeah. He's a fun And mudgeon. he plays it for fun, too. Yeah. And, and he seems like a cool guy. He didn't hate playing Han. He, he just wanted... And when he told George Lucas, you should kill Han, it wasn't because he wanted to be done. I mean, that was... He already thought he was going to be done. It was the last movie, Return of the Jedi. That was the last film. He said... He wanted Han to die because he's like, his arc is over. There's no more for him to do. I want him to have a sacrifice. That's what he wanted, which to me speaks for loving the character, not hate it yet. Yeah, that's and, cool. I didn't know that. And George Lucas was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to kill Han because that's kind of sad and I don't want this last film to be sad, which respect. I, I actually agree with that because yeah. Lawrence Kasdan wanted to kill off Luke at the end. Um, and George Lucas is like, no, it's a fairy tale. It has a happy ending. Yeah. You're not supposed to kill the yeah. main characters at the end. What? I'm this making ain't, a, this ain't JP, bro. I'm making a happy story. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. And Lawrence was like, all right. All right okay. <laughs> and, okay, fine. and he was the first to come back for the sequel trilogy, Harrison Ford. He had to, yeah. Mark Hamill was called and he's like, no, I don't want to come back. Yeah. And Harrison Ford was like, yeah, I'll do it. And Carrie Fisher was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then they both called up Mark and were like, come back! And he's like, okay, I'll do it. Okay, okay, okay nice. fine. Okay. And then what people keep saying is that he convinced J.J. to kill Han. That's not what happened at all. J.J. made that decision himself. He said yeah. it. He, he, he's made the joke. He has said he, Harrison Ford was too sexy to stay alive in the movies. <laughs> he's still looking pretty yeah, good. He made yeah, that decision. Yeah. He said, I made Kylo kill Han to... S say once and for all, Kylo cannot be turned to the light. He literally said that in an, inter in an interview that he had him kill Han, so the audience would be like, "Oh, he can't be redeemed like Vader because even Vader couldn't kill family." Yeah, he was he was actually into Star Wars. He knew how to do that, yeah. and here we are in Episode Nine, and he's forgot everything. Yeah, or he's just like, you know what, Kylo? He it's an even greater like change. Because he, he killed family. But the only thing that could... Now he's that, been killed by... His family. No, no, no. I would, wait, not family. <laughs> Ray's not his, his family. No, but like, no, no. Because the thing that turns him <laughs> is his dad, the force ghost, the person he killed. Uh -huh. So the only thing that could turn him was his family. Oh, wait, sure, that's yeah. kind of like a yeah. sweet message, but... I mean, I guess he did that because he's like, wait, his entire family is dead. <laughs> the only people that can... Redeem him or help him get redeemed, which it would have been. And I just, I believe at the end of the day, it's money. Harrison Ford would come back for it. He would. I mean, yeah. You see, the thing is, Harrison Ford has one hobby he really likes doing. He likes flying vintage planes, and that is a very expensive hobby. That's true. <laughs> so he needs some moolah. I'm surprised Leia's Force Ghost didn't show up. I, I know. Uh, Doesn't she just die? I mean, yeah. I mean, I will be very happy when um. It make more sense. Um, Harrison Ford goes out like secondhand lion boys, the grandpas, and you guys seen that movie? No. <gasps> secondhand lion. That's so good. I'll spoil the ending for you, but why? No, Wait, okay. you could show it to us. Okay, sure. Yeah, but for the viewers, watch that movie, <laughs> and and Harrison Thanks Ford. To you, All two you'll of know them. what I mean. This podcast is supported. By viewers like you. All oh wait, then how are how are we doing? All two of you. <laughs> <laughs>